I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, He kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for His own. I must tell Page 
Somebody else tonight got something on your heart? Word or a testimony before we go on? Hearts and minds are clear tonight? Listen, I'm telling you now, if you, if you miss out on, on doing what God would have you to do, uh, then I promise you, you're going to miss out on a blessing. Amen? Uh, if you got your Bibles tonight, then we'll turn over to the book of 2 Timothy, chapter number 3. 2 Timothy, chapter number 3, when you find your place, if you're able... Please stand with us for the reading of God's Word. We want to just do that, which God would have us to do. You pray for us tonight. We don't ever want to get in the way of, of anything that God has to do. Amen. Uh, you pray for us tonight. 2 Timothy chapter number 3. And we're going to begin to read at verse number 12. The Bible says, Yea, and all... Uh, uh, it says, Yea, and all that will be live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, uh, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned uh, and hast been assured of, uh, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you today, Lord, and humble ourselves before thee, thanking you for another day and another opportunity, God, to come out on this side of eternity to worship and to fellowship with you. I pray tonight, dear God, that anything and everything that needs to be said or done, God would be said and done here tonight. I pray, dear Lord, for those that's not able to be out with us tonight, Lord, I pray that you'll touch them and get them back at the next appointed time. Lord, for those that should have been here that couldn't, that didn't, or just didn't want to be here, I pray, God, that you'll touch their heart and get them where they should be. I, I pray to Heavenly Father, you'll help us to live for you and all we say and all we do. Lead and guide and direct. Not our will be done, but thine. In Jesus' blessed name we pray. Amen. Amen. We know this morning, uh, by the help of the Lord, we preached this morning over there about the, when Christ was on the cross. Uh, we preached over there about it is finished and the finished work of the cross. Uh, the Bible tells us here, and I was thinking this afternoon, just because Jesus finished his work, 
on the cross over there uh, does not mean that our work is complete just yet. Amen. Uh, if your work and my work was complete, uh, God would have took us on home. Amen. Uh, we'd already been out of here. Uh, but there are things that we need to be doing. Now, I can make a list uh, and I can preach a long time, but I think there's some things that what Paul was writing when he was writing unto Timothy, uh, he was talking here about some things that we had learned, some core values, uh, some core things that we need to allow uh, to be continued on. I, I, tell, I was thinking this afternoon, I was, I've was i been in construction, in or around construction all my life. Uh, that's all I know. That's all I've been around. Uh, uh, and it's been, it's been very vital to our family and providing for our family. Uh, but here's what amazes me. And it's one of, the, one of the things that discourages me and aggravates me uh, is to drive down the road uh, and see a building that was built for something uh, being used for nothing. Amen. Uh, it drives me crazy. Uh, you know, we put all this time, we put all this effort, uh, we put all this money uh, into building something, uh, and then there'll be a, that company moves in, that place moves in, uh, and they take over and they work there for a little while, and their things maybe things go great, uh, and they decide to build something bigger or something better, uh, and they move out, but that building just sets empty. It's not being used. That drives me insane. Uh, another thing that drives me crazy is not only just to see a building set in empty, uh, but to see a building that has set empty and has began to be run down. Uh, it, it just absolutely, I mean, just things just begin to fall out. The windows are beat out of it. Uh, paint's falling off. All, those things drive me crazy, amen? Uh, and it gets my mind to wondering, uh, wonder what happened there, amen? Uh, I wonder why that that building is empty. Uh, I wonder why that building has went down. Now, I guarantee you that every one of them, uh, has a story, uh, that every one of them has some reasoning. Uh, and I'm sure that even every one of them uh, probably at some point uh, had some excuses uh, of why that it went down. Uh, but there's a, lot of, there's a lot of things and a lot of times uh, uh, that we can look back through and we can look into those things and we can find out uh, that when they moved out of that place, uh, things did not get any better. Amen. Uh, things were not what they used to be. Amen. Uh, I, we drive by one coming to church all the time. Uh, there's a little old restaurant down here, uh, or used to be a restaurant, it used to be called K&R. Uh, right now, that place used to thrive. Uh, I used to drive, we used to go by there, and we'd see people stop there. There's always somebody in there. Uh, there's always something going on there. There's always cars there. Uh, but now, no matter who moves in, it seems like the business just fails, amen, uh, because it wasn't, it's not being used, uh, and it wasn't to the quality, uh, it wasn't to the expectations uh, of what the original uh, was set up for, amen, uh, listen, I want you to know today uh, that God has a plan for each of our lives, uh, this same concept, this same thought process, uh, it can be applied to our spiritual lives, amen, uh, I wonder if it was uh, on the outside looking in. Now, some of us used to be uh, something that we're not now, amen? Uh, uh, sometimes it looks like uh, that Christians have gone to the wayside, uh, lives are getting run down, uh, windows are beaten out, uh, and the lights ain't even on anymore. Uh, hey, but God wants us to shine bright for Him. Uh, it's not because the power bill's not been paid. Uh, it's not because maintenance is due, amen? Uh, I'm telling you, the price has already been paid. We just got to be willing to continue in the way that God intended us to go. Listen, a lot of these places fail because they leave a process. I was thinking many years ago, now I used to, I, my, my grandmother was a Coca-Cola lady. Now I like Coca-Cola pretty good myself. It kind of rubbed off on me. I, but I remember many, many years ago, and I've watched a documentary on it as well. I remember when Coca-Cola decided that they were going to come out and change their formula and, call, and come out with something called New Coke. Matter of fact, they just left it Coca-Cola for a little while, uh, and they changed that formula thinking that everybody uh, would just go right along with it. Now, they lost millions and millions of dollars because they changed the formula. Amen? All because somebody 
some new CEO uh, had taken over uh, and he thought he knew better uh, than what than the people he knew, thought he knew uh, what they would want. Amen. Uh, and he decided to change it up uh, and sales rock bottom. Amen. Uh, and you know what ended up having to happen? Uh, he had to go back to the original uh, formula that they had to start with uh, and that Coca-Cola has always remained number one in sales ever since. Uh, hey, let me tell you something. Uh, that's the way it is with a child of God. Uh, that's the way it is with a Christian. Uh, I promise you uh, you have to get back to the old paths. Uh, you have to get back to the old ways. Uh, hey, if we're going to remain uh, what God wants us to be, uh, if we want to have victory, uh, if we want to strive and be right. We want to have courage. We want to have what we're supposed to have from God and see the results thereof. We've got to get back to the basics of the Lord. Can't go with all this new stuff. Listen, there's so much junk going around in our communities today. Going around our countries today. Listen, it's one thing to turn the news on and watch, watch what's happening in the big cities. But it's another thing just to look out the door and see what's going on in your neighborhood, amen? Uh, to see what's going on in your, in your town, amen? Uh, hey, I'm telling you this, and we've sat back way too long. Uh, we've sat back and we've not continued, amen? Uh, we've sat back and we've just allowed everybody else uh, to come in. Uh, we've not only allowed the windows to be beat out. Uh, we've not only allowed the lights to be turned off. Uh, hey, but we've allowed the weeds to take over. Uh, we've allowed the weeds to come come in uh, and begin to grow up uh, that you can't even see the house no more. Uh, listen, I tell you what, uh, I'm tired of it, amen. Uh, I want to let the light shine. Uh, that sign out there says heavenly light. Uh, it didn't say heavenly dim. Uh, it didn't say heavenly bad. Uh, it didn't say this heavenly Baptist. Uh, I'm telling you, it said heavenly light uh, and it's time to let the light shine. Hey man, you know what? When you go in and they see some of these old buildings and all these things taking over, sometimes you got to go in, you got to do some weeding, amen. You got to do some clearing. You got to get the stuff out before you can get stuff in. You got to tear things down and start over sometimes. But I'm glad to know today, uh, even when things have to get tore down in my life, uh, there's still a foundation, amen. Uh, there's a foundation that's been laid by God, uh, and the chief cornerstone is Jesus himself. Uh, I don't care what the world goes with. Uh, I don't care how many numbers they got out there. Uh, I just want more to work it on one number, uh, and that's the one, uh, the one and only. Uh, that's who I work for, uh, and that's who I want to serve. I told Melissa coming to church that we talked about today. I'd rather have a few. I'd rather preach to a few that are willing to serve God than I had a multitude that has no desire but just to be seen. Amen. Listen, the Bible said for us to continue therein. For a continuing what? Uh, he said for, for us to continue the things that we learned. Uh, let's go to the things that we know about. Uh, let's go to the things that God has instructed us on. Uh, let's go to the things and continue there. Uh, I think one of the first places uh, and the first things that we ever learned uh, about being a Christian. Uh, I think one of the first steps that we can ever take uh, is to learn how to pray. Amen. Uh, I'm not talking about no little piddly prayer. Uh, I'm not talking about a routine prayer. I'm not talking about something you put no thought in. I'm talking about something you get a hold of God with. I'm not talking about one knees. Hey, that we just say, now lay me down to sleep. I ain't talking about that. I ain't even talking about the Lord's Prayer when he gave us instructions of how to pray. We use that as a little routine. I say, let's begin to get back like old Paul and Silas when they was in jail. They had to call out on God. Hey, to get the prayer, get the walls down. They had to ring the prayer bells of heaven. They had to get a hold of God. Some too many times we're more concerned about going to sleep than we are praying. Too many times we get up in the morning, we're too concerned about the day and what it holds than we are getting a hold of God. Most important thing, I heard a statement said a long time ago, said he ought to be the key that unlocks the door in the morning, 
prayer. And it ought to be the key that locks it when I go to bed. Hey, prayer. Hey, that's what we ought to be getting a hold of. We should have a burden. I'm talking about a burden where there's conviction, where there's something on our heart, where there's something we got serious to pray about. We ought to pray like we've never prayed before. We ought to be getting a hold of God more now than we used to. Look, we're closer in our walk with the Lord. We're clo- you know what the Bible said about Jesus? The Bible said before Jesus went to that cross, he went into the garden and he prayed. And he not only did he pray, but he prayed that his, as his sweat became as great drops of blood. You know what that was? That was Holy Ghost conviction, amen. I, that was concern uh, for the people. Uh, that was concern for you and me. Uh, he was not. He didn't want to go to the cross, uh, but he was willing to go to the cross. Uh, he came back out there uh, and he asked the disciples, "said Could you not watch and pray one hour? Uh, could you not watch and pray just a little while with me? Uh, hey, I wonder when the last time uh, we had some real conviction in our prayers. Uh, we was really concerned uh, about the ones." we were praying for. Hey, you want to continue in the way. Hey, we were serious when we asked God to save our soul. We ought to be serious every time we go to it. We ought to be serious in the Lord. Prayer is not something to be taken for granted. Say it, prayer is not something just to be used occasionally. Prayer ought to be used every day. It ought to be used multiple times a day. It wasn't just last year, just about this time last year, not along from this time last year. We had Brother Tommy Worth in here preaching about a prayer closet. Prayer closet. Some of you went home and made prayer closets. I hope in prayer closets don't have dust in them. I hope they don't have a place where you don't even go no more. I, hey, but I can tell you right now, I, we need to dust them off. I, we need to spit shine them. I, hey, we need to get back in there and frequent them. I, we need to get a hold of God. I, hey, like we've never gotten a hold of him before. I, our prayer life should be stronger today I, than it was when we got saved. I, we ought to be praying more, not less. Amen. I, tell you something else I'm glad we've got. Continue therein. Continue on this old-fashioned altar. When we can get a hold of God, when we can lift up others in prayer. We can pray for the things that's needful. We can pray for you. Don't say, "Well, I just don't know." Listen, I, I'm telling you right now, there's things to be in prayer about. There's a lot of things to be praying for, uh, just besides yourself, amen. Uh, listen, I spend a lot of time in prayer on me, don't you? Uh, I spend a lot of time in prayer on the things that I think I need or I want. Uh, hey, but we ought to be spending more time uh, in, the, in prayer uh, for our, though our family. Uh, we ought to be spending more time in prayer for a nation uh, that's dying and heading to hell. Uh, hey, when we've got everything uh, in, uh, running around, uh, running in our communities, uh, running in our offices, uh, hey, trying to bring in the world. Uh, trying to bring in everything. Uh, hey, I'm telling you, you wonder why the world is shaped it in. Uh, it's because our prayer life uh, has gotten weak. I think it's time to get back to a prayer. To get back to a prayer life that means something. Amen. Look, these people in the world today think all these crazy things. And they believe everything's okay under the sun. You want to know why they think it's okay? You want to know why they think it's okay to run through our school board with a sign that says they're a Christian and they're they're gay? I I can tell you why they think it's okay. It's because we as Christians have let down. It's because we're not praying like we should. It's because we're not standing like we should. We're not doing what God had told us to continue in. It's time to continue. It's time to continue our prayer life. Not only is it time to continue our prayer life, but to continue in this book right here. Amen. This book right here is the most important thing that we have. Most important possession, earthly possession that we get home. (coughs) I know people's trying to lay up guns and knives and money and silver and gold, laying up all those things. I ain't got nothing against those things. But this right here is the most important thing that you can lay up. You hide that thing in your heart. You hide it in your heart, listen, uh, that you might know it, uh, that you might be able to give it to somebody. The Bible tells us to study, to show ourselves approved uh, uh, unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, uh, 
rightly dividing the word of truth. Uh, hey, we need to give this book, uh, into our, get it into our hearts and get it into our minds uh, that we might be able to share it with somebody else uh, because we shouldn't keep it to ourselves. Uh, we ought to continue uh, to learn and to know more and more about God. Look, do we read it more now than we used to? If not, then we're taking steps backwards. If we don't spend more time in prayer and we don't spend more time in the Word of God, then what are we spending that time on? What, what have we allowed to occupy the space of time that, that we used to fill with the Word of God? You say, well, I've got this or I've got that. I've got, you, let me ask you this. Are those things more important than the prayer and, time, and, and the Word of God? It's time that we take those things into our life. We evaluate what's right. We evaluate what's important. Hey, this book right here, I ought to be able to answer men. I ought to be able to give an answer. Hey, I may not have the answer to everything, but the book has the answer, amen? We just have to be willing to go there. You say, well, I just don't know it, and I just can't understand it. Most of the time, you can't understand it because you never spent time in prayer, and we don't spend the time in the Word the way that we should. If we'll spend the time in prayer and the time in the book, God will give us the understanding. Right. Amen. People all the time coming up with nonsense. Amen. We've got a world full of geniuses. I told you a while back. <coughs> I can't understand why the world, you know, we're more educated now than we've ever been. <coughs> it amazes me how much smart, the smarter the world gets, the dumber people become. Amen. Huh? <coughs> it amazes me. They'll spend time studying everything but this book. Everything but what God wants us to spend time in. Hey, listen, I'm just as guilty as anybody else allowing things to come in and separate me. From the time that I should be reading this book. Hey, God wants us to know this thing. Not that I might be able to be a, a, a big scholar among men. Not that I might be well known among men. Hey, but that I might be able to be acceptable of God. Amen. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. That's what God expects out of us. That we share, know this book. And that we share it with somebody else. And listen. It don't matter who you are. It don't matter how much you know, how much time you spend in prayer. I tell you what else God wants us to, to continue in. He wants us to continue in the love that he showed us when he was on that cross. The love that he showed us of this world is saving our, our sorry souls. The Bible tells us above all is charity. Above all is charity. I get sick and tired of these people saying uh, that we hate people. Amen. Uh, that's the last thing that a Christian does. Amen. Uh, Bible said that a Christian is love. Amen. Uh, if we have God in us, we have love in us. If you're here today and you proclaim to be a Christian uh, and you hate people, uh, I'm here to tell you, son, you need to get straight, straight up with God. Amen. Uh, listen, I may not like some actions. Uh, I may not like some things people do, uh, but I may not even can't stand to be around some of them. Uh, but I got to love them. Amen. Uh, he was loved us enough to die for us and he loved them enough to die for them we got to have enough love about us to be able to pray for them and tell, read this book and tell them about Jesus and share the gospel with them right. above all charity listen there's things that we've done in our life that's just as bad as what somebody else has done you say well I ain't never killed anybody I ain't never done stole these things listen let me tell you something our sin is just as bad as anybody else's sin your sin to send you to hell. Your sin will send you there just as quick as anybody else's. It was not for the love of Jesus. Hey, somebody shared the love of Jesus with us, uh, and we ought to share that with them. Uh, not only should we share the love, uh, but love is like that we ought to love them like Jesus loves them. Amen? Uh, hey, yeah, I was willing to go to the ends. I was willing to do something extra for them. Uh, love is kind. Amen? Uh, love is forgiveness. Now, love is patience. Uh, hey, that's what we are to have for some of these people. Um, hey, we've still got to show love for them. Uh, I may not like anything they do. Uh, I may be against everything they stand for. Uh, but I still believe God can save their souls. Right. Look, all these people that march and stand against what we do, all of them, you know what they need? They need Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I got this thought this week. 
there's so much evil. We look and say that there's so much evil in the world. We look around and we see evil things happening. I read a story some time years ago, some time ago I guess it was, was about a professor in college and he, there was, he asked the question, is there a God? And did he create everything? Did God create everything was his question. And there was a student stood, uh, raised their hand and said, absolutely, God created everything. And he said, well, the professor said, well, if God created everything, then why did he create evil? And if he created evil, he must be evil. And every whole room got silent. And all of a sudden, there was a young boy. Another boy stood up. And he said, may I ask a question? And he asked, he said, certainly, you can ask a question. He said, well, let me ask you this. Is there a such thing as cold? He said, yes, there's cold. He said, well, how can you prove there's cold? He said, because you can feel it. He said, that's not true. He said, we measure cold. He said, we measure, we can tell by, we measure cold by the absence of heat. That's how we measure it in HVAC. We measure it because heat produces something. Heat produces something, and when that, when that absence of that heat is gone, you have cold. You begin to feel cold when the heat begins to leave. He said, so let me ask you something. He said, is there a such thing as evil? He said, absolutely there's evil. We see it everywhere. He said, there is no such thing as evil. He said, because if it was, God would have created it. What evil is is the absence of God. Hey, I can tell you today, by all means, that is exactly what evil is. It is the absence of God. Where there is no God, there is evil. I'm here to tell you today, we serve a God that loves us enough to if we We'll put him in here and we'll let enough God out. Evil has to flee. Is there any such he said, is there any such thing as darkness? The guy said, Yeah, there's darkness. He said, There is no such thing as darkness. He said, All there is is absence of light. We measure darkness by the absence of how much light is in that darkness. You want to know why there's evil in this world? Because we've let the light go out. We've let the light get dim. We've let it go so. He said, continue in the things that you've been taught. Continue in the things that you've been shown. Continue in the things that you've heard. I tell you, not only should we continue in the work of prayer, not only should we continue in the work of, of studying this Bible and spreading this love, but we ought to continue in the work of being just like him. God called us to be just like him. He didn't call me to be like somebody else. He didn't call me to accept everything under the sun but he called me to stand and be what God would have me to be and that's to be just like Jesus. That's what God wants us to be. Holiness. It's unspotted from the world. To keep those things out. How can I keep those things out? By keeping Jesus in. By keeping letting more of him shine. By letting him more be more bright. I tell you a few other things and we're going to close. I was thinking here, what, what, what did God teach us? What has he taught us? If he's taught us anything, he's taught us this. Not to back down. Here's what God told us. When you've done all that you can do, when you've done everything that you know to do, stand. Just stand. What can I accomplish by just standing? What can I accomplish just by just not saying anything? What can I accomplish by just standing there? Here's what I believe God wanted us to realize from it. God wanted us to be steadfast. He wanted us to be immovable. He didn't want us to be carried away with every wind. He didn't want us to stand with this side over here on the left. And he didn't want us to go to this side on the right when it was all convenient for us. But he said stand in the gap. He said to stand 
when you can do nothing else, uh, just stand right where God puts you, right where God wants you. Hey, your actions, standing, will make a noticeable difference. It will make a noticeable difference just showing up and being what God would have you to be, doing what God would have you to do. I tell you what else, continue. Continue in this place. Continue coming to this church. Uh, continue to be the church that God has called us to be. Uh, that's what we want to do. Uh, he said continue therein. Uh, how important is church? Uh, there's a lot a lot of people uh, got a misconception uh, about how invaluable church is. Uh, you want to know why church is important? Uh, I tell you it's important because Jesus uh, died for the church. Uh, he gave his life for the church. Uh, he said that the gates of hell shall not prevail uh, against the church. Uh, hey, I'm telling you today, we need to make sure this is an important part of our life not a routine not just a, a, a custom that we do but it's something we enjoy and it's something we instill in our young folks and we let others see us come here it's important that we do these things it's important that we continue because in continuing we're going to set a path for others to follow Listen, we're going to set a path for others to follow. You ever seen a place, you ever been driving down the road, you look over on the side, the, uh, side uh, uh, of the road and you see woods or something, you see a, a path up that woods that's wore down. Up, I mean, wore slick. It's been a routine that's got it that way. It's took a pattern for them to get there. Your attendance, your going to church will set a path for your children to follow. It'll set a path for your neighbors to follow. It'll set a path for your co-workers to follow because you won't, they, you've beaten the path down for them to get there. Hey, I'm telling you, it matters if we continue. It matters that we continue in the things that God has called us. It matters not only that we continue in them, but that we share them with everybody else. Never head bowed, never eye closed, never Christian prayer, never heart searching. I ask you now, is there something on your heart, something you need to come to the Lord about, something you need to do, something you need to step out on, something you need to surrender to. Hey, just something you need to get back to. Just come. Just come. I'm not asking for a lot of hands. I'm not asking for questions. I ain't really asking a lot of questions tonight. She's going to play one verse, and we're going to the Lord in prayer. This altar's open for anyone for any reason. You know whether or not God has spoke to your heart. Anybody else want to come tonight? <coughs> I hope tonight that you are exactly where God would have you to be. I hope you're doing exactly what God wants you to do. Trust in Him. Serve Him. Let people see Jesus in you. Jason, you play for us. Man, we appreciate you tonight. Maybe somebody's got a word or a testimony on your heart before we close. Hearts and minds clear. Do be much in prayer for our services Wednesday night. Uh, be praying about that. Be praying. Uh, also, uh, Brother Eddie mentioned something too. We need to get our uh, uh, fall. Uh, Sierra. Sierra. We need to get our fall festival plan thing too for men's chili cook off and that.
need to figure out what day that is, and we'll get that worked out to you. So, uh, we generally do the Wednesday before Halloween, or the Sunday night before Halloween. I, I think we have, when it was on a Sunday, I think we did do that Sunday night too, but we'll figure out, we'll get that in the bulletin this week, so be praying about that. Uh, Make sure, I don't know if, I don't think Travis or Dennis, either one's allowed to enter this year. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to quit making chili and I'm going to start making something completely different. I mean, I don't know what I'm going to make, but I mean, uh, huh? Yeah, something you can eat. So we'll do the Wednesday. So what, we'll do the Wednesday. So it'll be on the Wednesday before Halloween. What's, what's the date? The thirtieth, the Halloween's on the thirtieth. Oh, that's thirty. It's thirty-one days. I'm assuming the thirtieth. So it'll be the thirtieth. Listen, you expect me to know all that without counting on my fingers and toes? Look, so it'll be on the thirtieth. So it will be on the Wednesday before Halloween. We'll get that in the bulletin this week. Uh, do you remember about that? Get started practicing if you want to. And uh, all, all the men can get started practicing on their chili or whatever they're going to make. We do appreciate you. We thank God for you. Remember, as you're out and about this week, tell somebody about the Lord. Shake somebody's hand, tell them love them. God bless you.